Hello. <clears throat> Welcome, boys and girls, children of all ages. I gotta get a better intro. I don't I don't know what to say. It's always like the few awkward seconds where it's like, am I talking to myself? Has anybody joined the stream yet? And I just don't know what to say. I gotta work on that. I, I feel like I have a good closing, but not a good opening. Anyway, welcome to uh, Play Renegade, Renegade's uh, Twitch channel. I am Daddy Louie. I am your host uh, for the next two hours. Uh, we are going to be painting uh, miniature from the upcoming game from Renegade Game Studios called G.I. Joe Mission Critical. Uh, today, in case you haven't guessed it, uh, we are painting CoverGirl. Um, I am a huge fan of these models. I've said it a bunch of times. I like them exponentially more than I like the Power Ranger models. Um, which is not to say that I don't like the Power Ranger models. I like these that much better. Um, anyway, I'm blabbing and I don't want to blab anymore. So we're going to go down to the table. I'm going to show you this miniature. Uh, I've showed it off on stream before, but uh, I'm going to show it again, uh, as this is what we are painting. And you can just see right away instantly why I love this model. The de the, this model, uh, the details are super nice and crisp, uh, which makes painting it uh, a lot of fun. Uh, anytime you have a model uh, that has uh, sharp details like this model does, uh, it just makes it a lot more fun to paint than um, a model like... I don't have any next to me. Um, yeah, so like say something like this Battletech model, right? Um, which was fun to paint, but you can instantly see just by looking at it, the details aren't as sharp. It's just not as much fun to paint as something like uh, Renegade's models like this one. Um, so a couple things about CoverGirl before we get started. Um, her, from the neck down... Uh, basically all of her clothing. Uh, it's pretty basic colors. So we have a khaki color as her flight suit. She has some uh, brown boots, and she has a brown jacket. And then, of course, she has her gun, which is, you know, standard military weapons. So that's going to be, you know, probably black with some silver dry brush. So to make this more... Um, of, of a fun paint job uh i'm gonna focus heavily on the hair uh because as you can see it's very flowing uh the details on it are very sharp and so um that's where i'm gonna focus my detailing and stuff like that assuming that we have time to do that and assuming we get all of that done you know quickly then i can do more detailing on the rest of the model but for the most part i want to focus on the face and the hair uh, because that, I feel like, is the most important part of this particular model. The second thing is, uh, CoverGirl, uh, when she was first introduced into G.I. Joe, had short hair. Um, and then as she progressed, you can see she has long hair uh, in this model. She's also had different hair colors. Um, so at one point in time, she had brown hair. At one point in time, she had blonde hair. At one point in time, she had red hair. Um, I obviously cannot uh, and don't want to uh, paint her hair three different colors. So uh, my thought process is I want to paint it a uh, dark strawberry blonde. Uh, so we're going to have those elements of orangey reds um, or orangey browns, I should say, orangey browns um, with some lighter highlights uh, to give off that blondish reflection. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, you're going to get to see uh, how we work on eyes, uh, human eyes, which is nice, uh, because as a primarily a Power Ranger painter, we don't always get to do that, uh, considering Power Rangers, a lot of times you can't see their face. Uh, so I really enjoy doing that. Uh, the model does have a couple challenging parts, especially in the uh, chest and neck, because you can see here that uh, she is holding a uh, she's holding the rifle up like that, uh, so it's going to be tough to get in there. But we'll we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is the face and the hair and the hands. 
so that I can wash them uniform uh, with um, some some flesh shade. And then I'll do all of the tans and browns of her costume. And that way I can get into some brown washes. And then finally we'll do our highlights and stuff like that. So you're going to get to see how I do uh, like a reddish strawberry blonde uh, hair, which is which should be fun. Uh, and that's it for me talking. I've done something that I usually don't do. Uh, as you can see here, I've already laid out my paint colors. Uh, I usually don't do that mostly because of laziness and because I like to change my mind a lot. But uh, in this particular case, I don't think that I'm going to change my mind a whole lot. So uh, the first color that we're going to go with is uh, Citadel's Cadian Flesh Tone. It's pretty much my go-to um, for any type of um, Caucasian pale skin. Uh, if I wanted her skin to be slightly darker or uh, even tan, like she just got back from the beach, I may not necessarily start with this color, um, but that's I want to give her kind of a pale skin color um, because I really want the hair to pop, right? So, um, so I'm going to start with that. My, my brushes are nice and clean, sharp tips. Um, I made a tip video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, that's over on my socials on how to properly clean and care for your brushes. And uh, while I was doing that, I just decided to go ahead and clean all of my brushes. So, uh, so we have a nice clean start here with our brushes. Uh, also cleaned off my palette, so we have a fresh palette and freshly clean brushes, which is nice. I don't have to be as careful as I'm being right now. Um, I've been watching uh, this these past uh, couple of weeks. I've been really watching a lot more uh, YouTubers and streamers who have been painting as I've been trying to learn some new techniques and kind of get a little bit um, more experience uh, for my own personal growth. And... Um, a few things that I've been noticing that pro painters do uh, that I don't do, and nor do I necessarily recommend it, especially for beginner painters, is they will do an entire part of the body from start to finish before they move on to something else on the model. That's crazy to me because if you screw up on the, on the next part that you're working on and it ends up getting on what you just finished, you basically have to start all over, which is just crazy. But I guess they know what they're doing because uh, they're much more experienced than I am. I'm trying to get this, like I said, in those parts that are a bit challenging. Um, so a few things, a few tips that I've been picking up that I'm going to be trying to do myself more often is just really making sure my paints are nice and thinned, um, not putting so much paint on my palette. Uh, it, it clutters the palette and you end up wasting paint a lot of times because you don't need as much as you think you do. Uh, making sure my brushes are always clean. Uh, which I, I try to do anyway, but I recently I've been pretty lazy about it.
now usually what I do, um, I usually stick to, um, like a three color, uh, triad when I'm painting. So I'll start with a base and then I'll do like a mid-tone and a highlight. Um, and usually there's a wash after the base before the mid-tone and the highlight. This particular model, uh, with the hair especially, I need to move this to a different thing real quick, sorry. Um, the thing that I'm going to do slightly different here is with her hair, uh, I'm actually going to do two different colors before I go into a shade, uh, and you'll see why. It's just going to give us a nicer color. Um, another thing that I noticed that I do, that other pro painters do, and I always tell, told, told people before that I thought it was weird, but I guess other people do do it too. Maybe I picked it up from other people, is adding the tip back to your brush by wetting it with your mouth. I'm sure it's super sanitary, so don't worry. Don't worry. All right, let's see. Um, so the first color I want to do with the hair is this scrag brown. It's a nice orangey brown color. Uh, it's going to be really nice for our... Is there anybody in the chat? Not one single person has said anything. Am I not seeing notifications in the chat? Somebody say something if you can. I realize not everybody can has the ability to type because they're busy doing other things, but if I could just get one person to say something. See, like, I just put way too much on my palette. Hey, there we go. I see something. Hello to you, Tony, sir. folks lurking no worries lurk away it's all good i just wanted to make sure that my chat was um you know working so this is going to be the base it's definitely more orangey for that red hair than it is brown and that's okay That's what we want. Um, if you wanted to give her more of a uh, dyed red hair look, like I want this to look like it's a natural hair color. Um, with natural highlights but if you wanted to go you know extreme with the red um almost like a like a dwarf's beard or something like that you could totally do that uh and i thought about it i thought about going with like the dragon fire orange and making it more of like that ginger orange color um but given the fact that she uh, has had so many different hair colors um, as a character. I really wanted to kind of give her a nod to all the different colors of hair that she's had, if that makes sense. Three hours into what turned into a 16-hour shift. Oh, man, you have a long night ahead of you, huh? Switching to a smaller brush. Do I want that one, or do I want this one? I think I want this one. Oh, she just popped off the base. Not good. 
my uh, base holder is not cooperating. I don't know why. So I always like to add like a little bit of blue poster tack. Uh, to help really hold it in place, but I don't have any on there right now. Which is why she's flying all over the place. Uh, mostly because I don't plan on keeping her on this holder. The only reason I switched is just because um, she was coming off of the other one too. Wow. All right. That's no good. I'm switching completely. It's un super unfortunate. So now you can see I've got that blue tack underneath there. That should hopefully keep it a little more secure. is an interesting song. Next, thanks. All right, I think that's a pretty good base um, for her hair. I'm just making sure I got like underneath all these little flaps, flaps in her, in her hair. Make sure we have a nice base color. It doesn't have to be perfect because I am gonna do some initial highlights right now uh, before I go into, but you can already see that's a nice, you know, reddish brown, a nice ginger brown color. Um, so next what I'm going to do is go into a lighter color. Um, I'm going to use Dragon Claw Brown. It's kind of the next step down, I think, from Scrag Brown. It might be too similar. We'll see. And I might have to lighten it up a little bit. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good color. Uh, and right now, I just want to try to be uh, gentle and... I don't necessarily want to put it everywhere. Again, this is just an initial highlight. This is not the final highlight by any means. The 
these two colors are very similar it's very difficult for me to even see the highlights i'm actually going to add a tiny bit of ushabity bone uh, and the reason that i don't go pure white here is because uh, to, as a mixer is just because i don't want to um i don't want to dull the orange if that makes sense All right, I'm pretty happy with that as a base. Um, that'll all get toned down in the next step, which is going to be the wash. Uh, so we're gonna use a flesh wash. Uh, it's kind of a mix between um, a reddish wash and a brownish wash. Brownish wash, wash and brownish wash. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I want to use a, a brush that is not this one. These brushes are my good brushes. Um, so I'm just use a regular layer brush. Um, I don't want to use my normal uh, wash brush, uh, wash brush, uh, because I um, I want to be able to control it. I don't want it to go everywhere. So I'm gonna put this on her skin. Start with her hands so I can let that hair dry uh, a little bit. In all honesty, I probably should paint the gun first before I do this. 
Um, but it's all right. If I have to do it again, I can. Um, when you do yours, I would just do the do the gun first. Um, because it's so close to the hands. When I go to do the gun, I'm probably going to get whatever paint I'm using on the gun on her hands. So Painting the gun first will allow you to fix your mistakes before you get too deep into it, if that makes sense. You want to make sure you get underneath the gun there by your neck and stuff. Hopefully it's in there because I can't really see it anyway so and then making sure that the hair is dry which it kind of is I'll put this all over the hair I'll put it on pretty thick at first and then I'll soak up some of the uh, oversaturated areas with a uh, dry brush not to be confused with dry brushing, but a dry brush. take all of the wash out of my brush and I go around and try soaking up the spots that are it's too heavy too saturated All right, so while that dries, we can go ahead and get started on the rest of her uniform. Uh, so, first we will do her khaki... Her khakiness. Um, I was going to use Steel Legion. I think I'm going to use this Bane Blade Brown instead. So I can put that up. You can see that the it's pooling really bad right there. And I don't want that, so just soak it up. Uh, so, like I said, Bane Blade Brown, that's what I'm going to use for the khaki flight suit. It's basically from uh, her chest down to her boots. Um, I'm probably going to paint the boots and the jacket the same color. We'll see. Uh, and then I'm definitely going to paint the belt and the pouches uh, a different brown. Probably too wet, but we'll see. Let's switch to something a little happier. This music is depressing me. Uh, let's see. Let's just play the. Oh, maybe this one. No? Okay. How about 
just surprise me. So my paint is a little too wet. I'm going to have to add a little more of that Bane Blade Brown. To my palette. I'm glad I decided on this color instead of that Steel Legion. The Steel Legion is a great color, um, but I would have ended up going over 99% of it because um, it's significantly darker than this, and uh, I want her flight suit to be uh, pretty light in color because uh, her boots and her jacket are uh, pretty dark. So. Uh, so that's one coat done. I'm probably going to have to add a second coat on there. Uh, we'll see when it dries. Uh, I actually bought some new paint brushes. And I wasn't going to try them because they look like shit. Excuse my language. They look like crap. Um, I, I usually almost always buy expensive paint brushes. And I really just was feeling cheap, and these ones came pretty highly recommended uh, for what I would consider to be budget brushes. Uh, so, so we'll see. I'm, I, I'm going to try using them. They're these, in case you are curious. AIT Art Premium. Uh, it came in a five-pack, five different sizes. I'm going to start with the... Um, guess it's a two it, it doesn't look like a two it looks more like a oh, I guess it is a two 
because this is a two out of this one on the left. So that's pretty close. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give this a shot. See how it works. we got to get it wet out the gate here. Brushes really can be all about just properly taking care of them. Um, if you wash them like I recommend after each painting session, um, it will preserve the tip. And um, yeah, that's not a bad thing. Alright, I'm going to switch colors because I'm basically just painting on top of uh, wet paint. I'm actually going to put my other brushes away completely. Let's see if I could go exclusively with these new brushes. Um, okay, uh, so I'm going to attempt to use this Dryad Bark for my um, for the coat and the boots. They are very similar color in the reference photo that I'm using, so I'm gonna use it for both. I may make the boots lighter than the jacket, we'll see. Um, we'll see kind of where I go from there. Uh, the hair is drying pretty nice. I'm not super happy with it. Um, we'll see. Dryad bark on my palette. Not a lot, because I'm really trying to work on that. It doesn't need a ton of water. It's pretty thinned down already. Dryad Bark is a pretty underrated color. Um, when it comes to Citadel paints, a lot of people gravitate towards, like, um, what is it, Ry Rhinox Hide, um, which, you know, admittedly, that was the first color that came to mind when I thought about this. But it really is more of a reddish brown, which is not what I'm wanting for this uh particular paint job uh, cover girl is a Joe so we want to give her a more classic military look so we want those chocolate browns and khaki tans and stuff like that so uh, that's why I did not go with Rhinox Hide and instead I'm going with this Dryad Bark plus I haven't used this color in a really long time so
so initial thoughts on these brushes at the moment they're actually performing pretty well um we'll see how they hold up for an entire paint session well obviously not an entire paint session because i've already been doing stuff with another brush but you get the idea Uh, so while we are just doing this, I have a few plugs. Um, next week, uh, and I'll, I'll go over this again at the end, I'm sure. Uh, but next week, uh, we will be painting on Monday. Uh, and it will be another um, Ranger painting session. So uh, if you do not follow my socials, Renegade socials, uh, definitely do that because at the end of the week, uh, probably on Saturday, uh, I will be posting a poll uh, of which ranger you would like to see me paint or which heroes, I shouldn't call it a ranger miniature because it might not be, uh, which heroes of the grid uh, would you like to see me paint. Um, so definitely make sure that you uh, participate uh, i always do the polls on all of my uh, socials and all of renegade's socials so you have like five different places you can vote um so if there's something you really want to see you can basically get five votes in for it uh, if you participate in all of those uh, polls plus i have a bunch of renegade product uh, from my personal stash that I will be doing giveaways and stuff for in the uh, very near future. So you don't want to miss out on those things either uh, for free free games uh, and miniatures. Uh, what else? Uh, after this stream, uh, Renegade has uh, is continuing their... Uh, G.I. Joe month with uh, How to Play the uh, RPG. So if you are into the uh, learning the G.I. Joe RPG, you want to stick around until after my stream for that stream. Uh, that will be starting right after I get done. So that's cool. Um, sorry, I'm not trying to pull this away. Uh, let's see what else what other plugs I got I guess those are the main ones for now uh, I mentioned it earlier but I did post uh, on all my socials today um, a Tuesday tip that's a new thing that I'm doing uh, quick 60 second or less uh, tip video on improving painting um, and stuff like that uh, this week was about uh, how to keep your brushes young and healthy how to maintain them and clean them and stuff so uh, definitely check that out that one was actually a uh, a request somebody requested that I do that so uh, if there's any specific uh, painting topics or or things that you uh, would like to see me cover in those tip videos definitely let me know shout me out wherever you can post it in here and, uh, and I'll try and make a tip about it I'm by no means I say this all the time I'm by no means a professional painter I'm not a pro painter uh, I'm not even an expert painter. I'm probably a uh, somewhere between a uh, beginner and an intermediate. I still have lots to learn, um, but I have the platform to do it, and so uh, I want to help people uh, to get better than I am, basically. I love showing somebody how to paint and then 
next thing I know, I'm getting a message of a miniature that they painted, and it's far exceeds my skills and abilities. Um, it makes me very happy. And that has happened, so. I tell people all the time, if I can do it, you can do it. I have such shaky hands, like I'm shaking now, like crazy. She has this uh, fleece um, underneath the coat that kind of goes up around the sides where the zipper would be and then behind her neck. Uh, I am going to attempt to paint that white. Um, so I'm going to try to avoid... Um, avoid getting too much brown on it because painting white over a dark color like brown is a nightmare. There's really no... That's like something that's like... <laughs> like there's really no tip for that. You just have to do several, several layers... Um, over the dark color to get the light color that you want. Another thing I've been noticing a lot of pro painters don't do is use washes very much, um, which is also crazy. Uh, I'm really trying to work on my uh, blending and my transitions from one color to another, uh, which has led me down a path of learning how to feather, uh, how to uh, blend, wet blend, uh, two brush wet blend, stipple, glazes. Um, unfortunately, at least when I do these renegade painting streams, a lot of those techniques I will not be able to do and demonstrate for you. I mean, I can demonstrate them, but the problem is, especially when it comes to, uh, specifically when it comes to like glazing, is it requires you to dry, uh, to allow stuff to dry in between each uh, layer. And you need several, like 10, 20, sometimes even more layers in order to get the transition that you want. And because you have to let each transition dry or each layer dry, we just don't have time in the two hours to do it. Um, I am going to be, another plug, LOL. Um, I am going to be starting my own painting streams uh, on a separate channel. On uh, My first one is on May the 5th, uh, Revenge of the 5th. And um, on that channel, I will have unlimited time uh, per model 
to, I mean, I'm still going to try and do one model per session, but if I'm, oh man, I just got that brown on the thing because my hand slipped. Um, I am going to still try and get one model done for per painting session. However, um, I totally lost my train of thought. However, I am going to – I don't know. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, man. I to Like I slipped, and my hand slipped, and I got paint where I didn't want it, and then whatever I was saying before that, right out my head. Oh, uh, I still am going to try to get – one model done per stream rather than breaking it down since uh, initially I'm only going to be painting I'm only going to be streaming once a week on Thursdays um, however I, I don't have a time limit right so uh, here I, I, can, I only have two hours to get these models done or we have to save them for another stream and then I don't get to as many models so this is more like quick beginner paint jobs but if I want to go into greater detail, try different techniques, um, and things like that, that will be done on my channel. So, uh, and I, I'm going to paint more than just GI Joes and Power Rangers. So that should be fun. That is coming soon, guys and gals. Guys, gals, and renegade pals. to my weird music let's click on chill all right uh so right now i'm just getting a little more of that brown and i'm trying to go over any spots that it seems a little thin I gotta grab some more of that khaki or whatever color that was that I was using. Uh, Korak stone, no. Bane blade brown. And I gotta go over this area that I screwed up here with that brown. My hand got away from me. Now I'm going to paint the belt and this pouch on the belt. I'm going to use a very dark brown for that. Uh, so I'm going to use German camo uh, black brown. It's uh, significantly darker than, uh, than this coat. Uh, which I want. I want the uh, colors to be uh, pretty distinguished. She has a belt buckle. I might paint that silver.
I'll switch to a smaller brush. This brush has been okay. Um, now I'm going to switch, no, this one to the zero. I'm realizing that on the model, they don't look so so different, the browns. On my palette, they look super different. But on the model, they both just look like a very dark brown. I promise they're different. Even if you can't see that they're different. I do like this per ugh, this particular brush for small detail work like that belt. That was nice. All right, I'm gonna grab a dab of silver uh, because I want to paint her uh, belt buckle. nice and I can't possibly do a model without using some German gray so I'm gonna get some German gray on my palette and I'm going to paint the gun in that color I think German gray is a great color for uh, for real life a uh, gun like this one. Because uh, most guns, I mean, are probably black in real life. I guess that's a gun stereotype. I don't really know. All the guns I've seen in real life have been black. Um, so using German grays makes sense.
like I said about the gun earlier, uh, definitely want to do this before you paint uh, the skin. I can see uh, like in between her fingers uh, where the gun is. And uh, it's, it's nearly impossible if I mean, I shouldn't even see nearly. It is impossible to get this uh, color in between her fingers uh, without getting it on her fingers. So uh, I've already done it like a bunch of times. So. Definitely, definitely should have painted the gun before I painted her hands. But it's okay. Troy says, looking good. Thanks, Troy. Um, another thing that we could do on those fingers is put a black wash on the gun and then let it go into the cracks of her hand. It'll sit there and then all we have to do is um, kind of repaint the fingers. Um, it's better to do that uh, with the wash than with the paintbrush. Uh, I'm sorry, than with the regular paint because um, the wash will not stain uh, the fingers as bad as regular paint will. Um, so it'll still be a challenge uh, to repaint the fingers with the dark wash on there um, because, again, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, it's challenging to uh, paint a uh, light color over a dark color. So painting the skin over German Grey, for example, uh, would be pretty tough. But an easier way of doing it would be, like I said, to let the wash do the work. And then the stain from the wash is the only thing that we have to kind of paint over. I hope that that makes sense, the way I worded that. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do here. Um, I thought about putting a wash on the gun anyway. Putting a black wash on there will also help fill in any parts that I missed because uh, I feel like I missed a bunch. All right, so I'm going to let that dry for a second. While that dries, I'm going to hit the uh, close with my uh, with my brown wash. So I'm going to use that same brush that I used earlier uh, for the wash. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. Just 
go kind of from the waist down and then from the waist up. This wash is really where you're going to see how amazing this model is. Letting the uh, letting the wash fall in all of the recesses of the model. You're going to see all those details pop. Like, look at those pants. Right? As I'm putting the wash in, you can see that seam line on the pants is going to pop. That's a detail that just makes all the world of a difference when looking at the model the folds in the pants here. So I really need to make sure that this wash is everywhere. So I'm gonna go pretty heavy with it to start and then I will soak up uh, any excess that's pooling where I don't want it. Sometimes you don't, I mean, I, I, like I said from the beginning of the stream, this is an amazing model and I'm in love with the G.I. Joe models so much, but there's times, you know, where you can't really appreciate just how awesome a model is until you get that wash on there and you can see it, you know, going into the folds and making details pop that you didn't initially, like I said, really see or appreciate. I'm trying to be careful not to get this in her hair, mostly because um, I want to be able to work on her hair while this is drying, and I won't be able to do that if I get this everywhere, so... Soak up some of the pooling in some spots. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm immediately going to get my black wash for the rifle. Same brush. 
Uh, if the two of these things meet at some point and mix, I'm not super worried about it. That's why I'm not waiting for the other wash to dry. And I'm just going to let it fall in between the fingers there. Pretty happy with those washes. Um, I'm going to hmm probably work on her hair before her face. Let's see, what do I want to do for this hair here? Mixed, uh, I mixed a little bit of Ushabity Bone uh, into the Scrag Brown, which was the uh, which was the first color we put on the hair.
Sorry, I'm not talking a lot. These hairs are um, uh, pretty defined and pretty detailed, and I'm trying really hard to stay inside the lines. <laughs> Let me do one more highlight, let's see. It's okay. Sorry, I realize I'm not getting any of that on camera. It's okay. It's a little more... I might end up putting another wash on it, if I'm being honest. I'm just leaving it with that second wash. It's a little more blonde than I wanted it to. So if I put a brownish red wash on it, it should take care of that. I'm going to do a little bit with the skin real quick. A little Cadian flesh tone on my palette here.
I'm gonna do the eyes really quick um, before I do any more uh, on the skin because uh, I've made that mistake before. Uh, so I'm going to use Althuan Gray uh, for the whites of the eyes. It's pretty much what I use uh, exclusively for this. Uh, I also usually like to use black. However, um, I don't have any black on my palette. And I guess I'll put a little on there because I'm going to have to use it later anyway. All right, so I've showed this on stream before, but uh, in case you missed it, this is how I do eyes. I outline the shape of the eye in black first. Uh, this is especially uh, useful for females uh, because it kind of gives them the uh, appearance of mascara. That is assuming you want to have the female that you are painting have makeup on. Uh, just like that. Then I uh, clean my brush, of course. And then I want to switch from uh, black to that Althuan gray. Um, and I want to fill in that same spot uh, that I just did with the black. However, I want to leave just the faintest outline uh, of the black around it. Uh, the challenge here is when using white paint, uh, it gets chalky very quickly, so you have to move pretty fast. Um, and if at any point in this step you mess up, you can always just cover the eye with black again and start over. And then, uh, then you just need the pupils. So you get that black again after... You clean your brush. You only need the tiniest bit on the tip of your brush. You want to make sure the point of your brush is very sharp. And then you just dot the pupil. That's how you do eyes. Uh, now I want to give her a little bit of lipstick. Um, I don't know what color. Maybe I want to do an orangey red. I'll try Wild Rider red. We'll see how that looks. Um, I remember when I painted Rita Repulsa for Power Rangers, I gave her like really dark purple lipstick and it looked really good. Um, I'm imagining CoverGirl probably has something a little more natural.
I don't know if I'm happy with the um, with the right eye, if I'm being honest. It's a little derpy. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that eye. It's gonna bug me if I don't. Sorry, gang. I don't know about the hair. What do you guys think? Hair is just not the effect I was going for, but I think that a wash might tone it down. Another wash. I could also do a glaze mixing red and yellows together. Maybe I'll try that instead. I do have red and yellow glazes. It's more like an orange glaze, but it'll work. I gotta be honest, this, um, this new brush that I have has worked wonders for these details. I feel bad for trash talking them earlier. I'm just screwing up really bad on this one eye. I don't know why. I'm overthinking it probably.
All right, I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And while it dries, I'm going to uh, do this white uh, felt fabric fleece. I think it's fleece. Fleece lining of the coat here. Uh, same color, that Ushabity bone. I'm going to have to get more on my palette. I'm realizing I'm running out of time really quick here, and uh, I haven't done much highlighting on the rest of the model. Uh, which I, I, I was afraid was going to happen because I was so uh, focused on some of the major details of the model, uh, which really are the hair and the... Uh, and the face, which I got the face almost exactly how I want it, so that's good. Just gotta fix that eye, and I'll be happy. If I had an infinite amount of time, I would probably um, put a wash on um, on this fleece as well, and then do highlights and stuff on it. Um, but there was no way I was going to get to that today, so um, that's why I just decided to just go pure white on it. Uh, and I think it looks good, like that. All right, let's fix this eye so I can move on. Or at least attempt to fix it. This will be my last attempt at fixing it. That's as good as it's going to get. I'm pretty happy with it. It's better than Duke's eyes. Duke looks like... Let me show you Duke. If you haven't seen Duke. God. What is wrong with me? Can't I get a model to stay on the dang things? The dying things. Duke's eyes, he's like super wide-eyed and yeah, he needs help. His eyes need some serious help. 
All right. Um, what was I doing? Yes, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna fix one little issue here with this gun. Okay. Now what I want to do is put a wash on that hair. I may, oh no, I decided I was gonna do the glaze, right? Let's shake those up. I'm gonna try and do a one one to one ratio of this blood letter red and uh, whatever that yellow is. Uh, Lamenter's yellow, Lamenter's yellow. Uh, maybe slightly more yellow than red. Um, the glaze is mostly to kind of reinforce the shade and also kind of help with the transition of colors so they're not so sharp. Normally with glazes, you want to kind of build them up. Uh, but in this case, I'm using it to uh, just tone down my uh, tone down my transitions a little bit and... Just overall strengthen the color. That's really what I'm trying to do. And hopefully it doesn't make it look reddish. More reddish. Um, I, I mean, I hope it makes it more orangey. Because um, my highlights were a little too blonde. And... I'm hoping this will help with that. It should. Again, this is not a wash, so. Um, All right, let's do a tiny bit of highlighting while we've got time. Um, first thing I want to do is add a little something something to uh, that gun because it looks a little plain Jane. So I'm going to grab my lead belcher and uh, put a little bit on my palette, a very little bit, because um, I don't want to really paint anything silver, I don't think. Let's take a look. Uh, maybe I can paint this rail silver here. And the barrel. A couple of these mechanisms. I wasn't going to paint much silver, and then I just 
100% changed my mind. The black gun just looks boring to me. from the wash. <laughs> she looks like she should be on the cover of a magazine. Hmm. She looks like she's a bit easy and maybe a bit breezy. I feel like I've heard that somewhere. Not a huge fan of the weapon, but I might tone down that silver a little bit with a black wash. I'm just toning down the silver so it's not so bright. Uh, how much time we got? 10 minutes? Ugh. I don't like it. Too rushed, man. Too rushed. Um, I'm going to grab uh, some brown here. Ooh, that is totally not... That's just not mixed at all. Let me just skip that paint color. Holy moly. CoverGirl is the new spokesperson for CoverGirl. Well, CoverGirl is a great is a great choice as a spokesperson for CoverGirl.
Unfortunately, I'm going to end up having to base this off camera, but I'm going to do the same thing that I did with Duke and with um, Dr. Mindbender. I'm going to put Dark Reaper on the top and then rim it with black. And then, um, just like I did for the others, I will post um, the finished product on the socials. So, uh, what are my socials? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Uh, you can find uh, me on Facebook uh, at It's So Tiny, I T S S O T I N I, uh, T I N Y, sorry. Um, and you can find me on Instagram. Oh, you can find me on TikTok at that too. Uh, I've started doing some TikToks, uh, which seem to be uh, doing very well, so I'm going to keep doing those. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at The Real R E A L. Daddy Louie. Louie is L-O-U-I-E. That's all one word. Um, Instagram seems to be doing pretty good. Please follow me on my socials um, because, like I said, I am going to start doing um, other live streams, and um, that will be a great way uh, for me to uh, let you know about them. Um, what else? I got nothing. Uh, make sure that you stick around um, for the uh, Ranger How to Play for the RPG. Uh, that's coming up in four minutes when I'm done here. Uh, so make sure that you stick around after I sign out for that to start. Um, it's usually not very long before they start it after my stream. Uh, next week, Monday, I will be painting uh, from Heroes of the Grid. So again, make sure you follow the socials so that you can vote for which ranger uh, or Heroes of the Grid miniature you would like to see me paint. Um, that information comes out usually Saturday-ish. Uh, so you can check that out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is CoverGirl. Uh, like I said, I am going to... Uh, paint the base and uh, get those pictures up on all of them socials. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, oh, uh, two weeks from today, uh, if you're only interested in uh, Joe's, uh, I will be painting another uh, Mission Critical. Uh, so that is on May the third uh tuesday uh right here on uh your favorite station play renegade I kind of like that her pants are a little dirty. That's cool. Um, yeah, but let me get that a little clearer for you. Uh, the hair actually turned out great with that uh, uh, with that glaze. You can see it's still trying to dry in there. Uh, so I'll let that dry before I get pictures too. But um, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. 
And I'm happy that you spent your Tuesday hanging out with me. You could have been anywhere else in the world doing anything else uh, that you wanted to do. And you chose to hang out with me. So um, anyway, I appreciate you. I appreciate Renegade. Thank you to them, as always, for having me on these streams. Uh, they make my dreams come true uh, just by being here. So uh, this, this is an amazing experience. So uh, remember to take care of yourself, take care of others, play your games, and paint your miniatures. And I will see you next week on Monday for more Phenomenal Monday. And two weeks from today for another Ranger or G.I. Joe painting stream. Yes, that. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody in chat. Love you guys. Mwah. See ya.